Hey everybody, this video is a demonstration and components overview of Fury of Tritus. It is an entry in the 2016 Board Game Geek Solitaire Print and, Pr Print and Play contest. So uh, this game is about the player being a god of the sea named Lord Tritus or Deep Lord Tritus and you're trying to stop some ships like these fellows from going across the ocean, stealing your treasures and coming back home. If you can destroy all the ships, you win the game. If a ship returns with some of your treasure, then you lose. So, the components of the game look like this. There are some sea cards, and these are the cards that the uh, ships will be sailing through. We also have some power cards. These power cards uh, have a few different things on them. At the very top, you can see we have some symbols. That is the treasure the card represents. It's sort of its value whenever you use it to buy other cards or whenever you spend it to power other cards. We have the title. We have a type. This one is a creature type. Some kingdoms, some ships some come from certain kingdoms, and those kingdoms are immune to certain effects, so you can't use every card on every ship. Every card has a power section. That describes what the card does when you play it. There's a section called the Oracle, which is uh, it's usually used on a card only once, but we'll get to that when I show the uh, how the game is set up and played. And there at the bottom, there is a cost section. That was a starting card, so it has no cost, but other cards have a cost. In this case, you would need to play or uh, pay two shells and a trident, and those symbols would come from other cards' treasures. So to set up the game, you first take a look at your C cards. You take the Sea of Man card, and you place it over to the right. You take the Lost C card, which is where your treasures are. You place that over to the left. And then you give the other C cards a little quick shuffle, and you lay them out in this pattern. You will end up with one card left over. So you're end up going to, you will end up laying six cards in the center, like so, and this last card gets tossed aside. You'll see that each ship has one or two symbols on it. For example, this one has a big wave symbol and a harbor symbol. Those symbols by themselves don't mean anything. They come into, uh, into play whenever other cards mention them, so they don't have any context outside of some of the power cards. Lastly, you're going to take these ships, which I haven't described yet. Each ship has a, some information on it you'll need to know. The numbers are on the outside, show you what the hull value is. It's sort of its HP, how much damage it can sustain before you destroy it. The number of sails, in this case it has two sails, tells you how fast it is, how many spaces it's going to move from turn to turn. And the symbol there in that sail is the kingdom that the ship came from. I showed you a creature power card earlier. Well, this kingdom, this ship comes from the kingdom that is immune to those cards, as you can see by that symbol. Uh, down here we have the treasure. Once this ship reaches the Lost Sea, that's the treasure it will pick up. And you can actually use that treasure later in the game if you are to destroy this ship. Another example of a ship might be... How about this fellow? He only has one sail, so he's actually kind of slow. But he has a lot of hull, and, he has, and he's from the Eyeball Kingdom. I don't have, actually have a name for the kingdoms yet. And you can see that this guy has a little semicircle around the number four there. If you want to play the game on an easier mode, that's the number you would start with rather than the five because by default you use the highest hull symbol, or the highest hull number when the ship is pulled out. So we'll see that here in a second. You'll want to shuffle these ships a little bit, and drop some on the floor, and go ahead and place them by the Sea of Man. Now, you'll also want to take these starting power cards with the, starting, the word starting card under there, give those guys a shuffle. Draw six, that's your starting hand. And then the rest of the power cards, the other 24, you'll want to shuffle these guys. This deck is called the Tide deck, the Tide deck. And from this deck, you're going to draw four cards. This will be sort of the market that you buy from. And these four cards are called the Tide. So those are the cards you'll be buying during the game. The card in the first slot here, whichever card happens to be there, is called the Oracle. And at the beginning of every turn, you'll be uh, executing these Oracle steps that you saw there. So that uh, has a couple of different uses. It brings the ships out into the game, and it also allows you to sort of pick certain cards to buy as you manipulate which oracle would come next because as you buy these cards they'll slide down and take up that spot so if you see a particularly bad oracle coming you might want to buy that card so that it doesn't trigger for example so those are the components and uh, I guess the next video will be just a little bit of a playthrough to show you how things work